The second weekend of racing in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Europe brings us to Paul Ricard in the south of France, and race one is about to get underway. It's a spectacular part of the world, this. It's a spectacular circuit and a spectacular backdrop, too, ahead of the teams for this first 50-minute race of the weekend. Identical cars, the Lamborghini Huracan. Uh, it is going to be a race that has the mandatory pit window between 20 and 30 minutes. And of course, it is going to be a race full of drama with Max Wearing and Loris Spinelli starting on pole position. And they are very much the drivers to beat because they won both races uh, last time out at Imola. And they start on pole position for this opener uh, with Loris Spinelli having been a multiple uh, Lamborghini champion, whether it's been in Pro, whether it's been in Pro-Am, whether it's been in the World Finals, and he was brought in to help Max Wearing at the back end of last season. And they did very well together. It is a partnership that continues for this season. And uh, as we uh, head towards the opening race, opposition is going to come from Pierre-Louis Chauvet and Johan Boris Shire, who line up on the uh, outside of the front row of the grid. But there are four classes that we need to factor into this because there is, as ever, Pro, Pro-Am, uh, the uh, Am category and the Lamborghini Cup for the less experienced or real gentleman races. And there are battles that rage on across all of those categories. The teams, well, you've got the likes of FFF Racing Team that did so well in GT3 racing a few years ago, taking on Vincenzo Sospiri Racing. The Oregon team with a very distinctive multicolored cars that you've seen in all sorts of one mate races over the years, quite often Renault, but now for a second season coming to Lamborghini Racing. And they won the championship outright, in fact, last year in its rookie season in Lamborghinis. There's the Bootsen team, there's, as ever, Bonaldi and Leipert, stalwart Lamborghini squads uh, taking on the rest as we get set for the opening race. David Addison is trackside, Gemma Scott down on the grid, and as I say, pole position goes the way of number 61, which for the first race is going to have Max Wearing doing the starting duties. Max Wearing, uh, the uh, Dutch driver, who was very much one of the pace setters last season as he uh, learnt about the cars. Big step up from uh, what he'd been racing in before in national races in Holland. The head of Lamborghini's motorsport department is Giorgio Sana. He's on the grid with Gemma. Giorgio, there's a very significant number that we keep hearing this weekend around the Super Trofeo, 1,000. Can you explain that for us? Yes, 1,000 drivers participating in the Super Trofeo since the beginning, that was uh, 2009. Um, and let me say, 1,000 drivers, including me, <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I have spent my first years in the Super Trofeo like a test driver for the company. And so I remember very well the, the first race debut in Adria in 2009 with just more or less 12, 13 cars. This was, let me say, the debut. So to have now a successful one mix series uh, with nearly 40 cars on the grid, uh, we are particularly proud about this. And I have to thank you, all the drivers that since the beginning uh, has invested a lot uh, in our race program. Well, there's 37 cars on the grid today ready to start this race. And it's a very tight and competitive championship as ever. And one that has just gone from strength to strength, as you say. Yes, we have to say that uh, also this weekend uh, in the qualifying uh, we did uh, the pole position with a lap time that is even faster than the GT World Challenge. <laughs> so I think performance is our uh, last problem. Uh, no, I think it will be a, a demanding race for all the drivers, uh, mainly for the gentlemen drivers because it's very warm. Uh, but the track is beautiful. Uh, it's a very safe track. Uh, I think all the drivers will enjoy in any case. Yeah, we can see just behind you. It's 31.6 degrees. It's going to be a tough call for sure. Giorgio, thank you very much. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. So for the drivers, they are being uh, strapped into the cars. And in many cases, you'll see the door is open to get a last bit of air inside the cockpit. Uh, in some cases, there'll be uh, some reflective sheeting to try and get rid of the sunshine uh, from the windscreen to try and reduce the cockpit temperatures. But at the front of the grid, the yellow nose car from the Bonaldi team, Max Wearing to go first, Loris Spinelli to take over, then they switch round for tomorrow. You don't have to have a co-driver. The majority of the entry now works on that principle that you do have a second driver, uh, but uh, it is not essential. But if you are a soloist, then you have to spend longer in the pit lane because there is, of course, the benefit to going solo because you're at one with the car all the way through the race. And... Uh, if you do serve as a soloist, you serve another three seconds in the pits. Let's rejoin Gemma on the grid. Max, it's super hot and in the car even hotter. You already look like it's going to be a challenge, this race. I'm already sweaty, so we have something to do for this race. I'm Luckily, I'm only driving 30 minutes, something like that. So just keep focusing and try whatever we can do. 
Where do you think most of the opportunities on track are going to come for the cars behind you? Where's you where are you going to be challenged? Yeah, we will challenge a lot, but uh, my, my main thing at the moment is just keep a gap with the people behind me and Loris can finish it up. So that's that's the main thing at the moment. But uh, yeah, with these hot temperatures, we uh, we just need to get focused and uh, and don't make any mistakes. We'll get the team to get some ice on standby. Have a great race. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, they're ready to go. Then is uh, an already hot Max Wearing. And he drives number 61 with, uh, on the outside of the front row, Pierre-Louis Chauvet. Now, Pierre-Louis Chauvet, the French driver, new to Super Trofeo this year, is part of the Lamborghini Young Driver program. Lamborghini has young drivers that are in Super Trofeo, and then it has its GT3 junior drivers. It goes without saying, they are in GT categories. Uh, Milan Tikens there is another of the young drivers, and uh, he is uh, partnered by Marzio Moretti. It should be Marzio Moretti to go first. But Milan Tikan's name has appeared on the timing screen. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that everybody's name on the screen that, that we've got is correct because that isn't how it was reflected in qualifying this morning. But that hopefully will update as the uh, green flag lap unwinds. 54, Marzio Moretti and uh, Milan Tikan's. This car, number six, is Jean-Luc Daria and Stefan Tribodini, shown as Jean-Luc Daria behind the wheel. But in qualifying, it was shown as Stefan Tribodini. So, again, one hopes that uh, things will update correctly accordingly once the cars are released from the line. And then on the third row of the grid, uh, there is going to be the car of Milan Petelet. And he will line up alongside the Spanish driver, Manuel Bergerano. Quick stroll up the grid, shows who is where. There is Bergerano's car, number 89, behind. Uh, is Amri Bonduel, Andres Lewandowski is next ahead of Gabriel Rindoni and Stefan Guerin. The Oregon cars there, Massimo Ciglia and Filippo Berto are next ahead of Oscar Lee, starting number 51 and Raffaele Giannoni alongside. Next up, Antonio Svossos and Emmanuel Colombini. Damien Chosek starts number 44, Pierre Feligioni number 2 is alongside. 70, Gerhard Vatzinger alongside David Serban, another of the young drivers. 66, Bronek Formanek and Pietro Perolini next, ahead of Claudie Gosselin, Jean-Francois Bruno. Then it's number 5 of Raphael Mikrut and Jürgen Krebs ahead of Gerard Vanderhorst and uh, Oliver Freimut. Francois Semelin and Francois Grimm are next. 22 is started by Livor Dvorak and it's Luciano Privitello alongside, ahead of Hans Fabri and Rodrigo Testa. The penultimate row is Sandro Moor and Regis Rego de Sebas and the last car 77 is that of Jose Alfredo Hernandez Ortega that is the 35 strong grid that he's going to be released very shortly on to the formation lap and uh, then it will of course be a rolling start the championship it is Loris Spinelli Max Wearing that had the pro category with those two wins in Imola eight points up on Jean-Luc Daria and Stefan Tribodini in Pro-Am Massimo Siglia and Lewis Williamson dovetailing British GT with Super Trofeo this year. They lead by just a point from Oscar Lee and Dan Wells. Gabriele Rindoni is 12 points up in AM ahead of Andre Lewandowski and then Stefan Guerin, uh, who is third. And it's Gerard van der Horst, a point ahead of Hans Fabri in the Lamborghini Cup contest. 87 there is Jean-Francois Bruno's car. He will start. And it is Karong Lee who will take over. It's a fine sight that they make, and it's a fine sound that these cars make as well. Alain Adon, the race director, giving the instruction for the one-minute board to be shown. And uh, then he will allow the leading car to accelerate away from the line. That will be responsible for effectively the pace lap. Brings the cars round to the start of the race, and uh, then we shall be in business. So the cars with, as I say, uh, different teams operating them, continuing the great success of Lamborghini Super Trofeo that runs in Europe, uh, also in North America. There has, of course, in recent seasons been a Middle Eastern and also an Asian championship, both of which have been put on hold because of the pandemic. Although motorsport is reopening in Asia, it's difficult. And so the uh, flow of Europeans that used to go and race in that, not easy, so that's just on hold for the moment. But there will be, the first weekend of November, the annual Lamborghini World Finals that brings the Europeans and the Americans to Portimao. Uh, it's always chosen to be a venue that none of the championships go to during the year as a good leveller, and it will be a great spectacle there. So the lead car waves away, and in a moment the race cars will be unleashed and we can get the formation lap underway. There is the green flag then to get this third race within Lamborghini Super Trofeo Europe underway the cars accelerate away from the line then with Max Wearing determined to get on with this he's been sitting in the car as they all have on the grid getting hotter and hotter finally by setting 
onto the formation lap. A bit of cool air can come into the cars. So, a welcome respite for the drivers in temperatures that are going up and up and up all the time. We are at about 10 minutes to two local time, and we've far from reached the peak of the day in terms of temperatures yet. They have another race tomorrow, and then the championship moves to Masano, first weekend of July, to Spa, to Barcelona, and then Portimao. So Max Wearing and Pierre-Louis Chauvet share the front row of the grid, ahead of Marzio Moretti and Stefan Tribodini on the second row of the grid. Milan Petelet is on row three with Manuel Bajarano, and then the fourth row is Amory Bonduel and Andrzej Lewandowski. The fifth row of the grid is where you find Gabriel Rindoni and Stefan Guerin, starting the Arcadia racing car ahead of Massimo Siglia, and then Filippo Berto next. Oscar Lee goes from the seventh row of the grid, the car that he shares with Dan Wells, with Raffaele Giannoni for company. Uh, then it is Antonio Svossos and Emmanuel Colombini, ahead of Damien Chosek and Pierre Felegioni. Next up, Gerhard Batzinger, who lines up alongside David Serba, Ronek Formanek and Pietro Perolini. Next, with Cody Gosselin and Jean-Francois Bruno on row 12. Row 13 is Raph Mikros and Jürgen Krebs. The 14th row, Gerard van der Horst and Oliver Freiburg, ahead of Francois Semelin, Francois Grimm, then Libor de Voracek, ahead of Luciano Privitelio. Hans Fabri comes next with Rodrigo Testa lining up alongside it. Sandro Mur and Regis Rego de Seves on the penultimate row, and Jose Alfredo Hernandez Ortega will round out the grid. So the cars on the Mistral straight, because this is a, a, a race with a reasonable number of amateur or less experienced drivers, it is one of the races here this weekend that will use the chicane on the Mistral straight just to break up the speed a little bit, so they're not arriving at the senior right-hander absolutely flat out. Uh, there, the view on board the pole position car as the field turns up through the right of uh, Bose, then towards Bendor. The Courbe du Village comes next, and gradually now the field getting themselves into this two by two Noah's Ark formation, ready for the rolling start. So Pierre Louis Chauvet on the outside there, runner up in last year's uh, Asian Formula 3 championship, drove in the FIA F3 series on occasions as well. He's also raced in a Formula Renault. Uh, Euro Cup or the Formula Regional Series as it morphed into and Euro Formula Opens. It's a big, big change, this, from single-seaters into a GT-style car, but it's where he sees the future for him and already picked up uh, as a Lamborghini young driver as Pierre-Louis Chauvet. So towards the Courbe du Village, then the Virage du Pont they come the view, as I say, looking out of the front of Pierre-Louis Chauvet's car, and he's going to be on his toes to try and out-drag Max Wearing. Loris Spinelli is so, so quick in these cars that inevitably the Wearing spinelli Bonaldi entry is the favourite, but a good start, if you can jump ahead of Max Wearing, could certainly be a different proposition as the race unwinds. So, the cars make their way up towards the timing line. The lights on red at the moment will change in a second if the race director is happy with everybody's position to get the first of the two Lamborghini Super Trofeo Europe races of the weekend underway the lights change we go racing they blast away with a good start made by Max Wearing then from pole position but Pierre-Louis Chauvet stays on the outside line all the way down towards turn one tries to make the move on the outside line who's going to come out in front as they scrabble their way through the left through the right it is Wearing who leads it is Chauvet who is second and then third as they come down towards turn three for the first time. Looks like Tribudini. Other great battles are raging on lower down the order here as the cars turn their way right and left through the chicane. But it is then up front just Max Wearing, who's managed to get that jump on Pierre-Louis Chauvet. The field turns out of the tight uh, saint Boehm corner. Turn three up towards Le Col. The two Oregon twins absolutely side by side there as they turn their way now up to one. There's drama there, look, because around goes the Privitelio car. So that was just ahead of Hans Fabri, I think. But Privitelio, Luciano Privitelio has gone around. So Privitelio rejoins. 
That was ahead of 32, in fact, the car that Sandro Moore started. So uh, Privitelio goes around, possibly with a bit of an assist, into the chicane they come on the Mistral. Uh, number 96 there, Gary Arindoni's, sorry, Raffaele Giannone's car, I should say, gaining ground under attack from Massimo Ciglia as they come on to the rest of the Mistral straight. Speed building once again at this point, up towards the right-hander of Cigni. Through that right, they will now swoop. And then the cars accelerate up towards the uh, Double Dois de, de Bosset. And that in turn loops them back round towards the completion of this opening lap of 50 minutes of racing. But Max Wearing up front is getting away. Pierre Louis Chauvet is second. Then in third place, it is Mazzo Moretti. Mazzio Moretti in the car that is operated by the Target Racing Team. And then in fourth spot, Stefan Tribodini for VSR. So four different teams in the top four places as there number 70 Gerhard Watzinger goes way way wide got the wrong line for the first part of that sequence of corners that pushed him onto the wrong line for the next and the leaders dive down to the Virage de Pont to end lap number one number nine there going through is uh, Milan Petelet to start that's the car that he shares with Dimitri Gavatsova they had a win at Imola in the pro-am category over the timing line goes the race leader max wearing and at the end of the opening lap he is most definitely getting away here because it's one second that he is to the good they turn out of turns two and three here or they approach to turn three and looking further down the order, 78, which is Emmanuel Colombini trying to get himself up the order. Now, Colombini ought to be further up than this because that car was quick at Imola, certainly in the first race, but only 19th at the end of the first lap. Replay of the start then as the cars accelerate away. Charge down towards turn one and Max Wearing being able to consolidate that advantage then as the cars turn through that first sequence of corners. Replay from another angle, times it nicely, accelerates away and through fourth on the grid. Good start also made by the white car, that of Stefan Tribodi needs to move across to cover the line on the run down towards the first corner. Tribodini then making up ground. Stuck his nose up the inside of Chauvet's car, but to no avail. Couldn't find a way through there. And the Privitellios have rejoined, but a long way down after that uh, early contretemps. Look at the start from Sandro Moore's car towards the back. You see that the field fans out across the line. It makes it very, very busy indeed. Loses a place on the outside line. Past him there goes Rigi Rego de Cebes. There is Luciano Privitelio, number eight in the Rexal FFF racing team entry. That car comes out just ahead as they accelerate from turn two down that short straight. Privitelio moves across to the inside and also moving back ahead of him is De Sebes there. So Sandro Moore makes his move at the inside of number 12. So that means that the Bootsman racing car gets hung out to dry on the outside for this next corner. Sandro Mur dives up the inside, but finds Privitelio in his way. Contact very definitely made, and around he goes, and that might well end up with a penalty going the way of the, the uh, Sandro Mur entry number 32, because that was clearly an assist. The Bernaldi car arrived really out of nowhere and clumped into the side of him. So the race leaders have gone through. That is two laps done. further down the order there you can see another of the Oregon entries that's Philip Oberto who's made the graduation this year from the uh, Clio Cup which he drove in the Italian and the European Championships last year into Lamborghini racing following in a sense Oregon as a team itself because that was uh, very successful in Renault Clio racing still is and making the move into Super Trofeo for this season the cars now about to turn their way once again onto the Mistral straight that incident between Sandro Murr and Luciano Privitelio is under investigation, perhaps to nobody's great surprise. So that is going to end up potentially with uh, a penalty to come because of the contact. Stefan Guerin for Acadia Racing here, turning his way in uh, currently 10th spot up through the Mistral chicane, and he's ahead now of Oscar Lee. So Oscar Lee pressing on as best he can. Gabriel Rindoni's car has been in that mix as well. But as they come up now towards the Bose right-hander, Max Wearing is clear in the race lead. He was 1.2 seconds to the good at the end of lap two. And the field turning up now towards the completion of the lap. So 
there. You can see the cars streaming their way towards once more the Courbe de Village, then on to Virage de la Tour. And Milan Petelet currently heading the Pro Am battle as they come over the line. Max Wearing leading Pierre Louis Chauvet then. That margin slightly down that time to 11 tenths of a second. Stefan Trubodini runs third, Marzio Moretti fourth, uh, Amore Bonduel fifth, Manuel Bajarano is sixth, and then Mano, uh, Milan Petelet rather is in seventh place. Uh, in eighth place is another class leader, Andrzej Lewandowski, ahead of Gabriel Ridoni, ahead of Stefan Guerin. So those three in AM getting themselves together. But this is for the race lead. Now, Max Wearing, more experience of these cars than is Pierre Louis Chauvet, but the gap is coming down just a touch as they turn now up towards the exit of saint -Bohme. this looped them round towards Le Col, and then onto the Mistral straight, that long, long straight interrupted for these cars by the uh, Mejan chicane. Little battle going on further down the order, number two there is uh, Pierre Feligioni trying to get up alongside Rafael Mikrut, uh, both out of the AM category, both experienced of these cars, and through on the inside line there goes Pierre Feligioni, so the Boots and car picks up a place. Carries that speed out of turn three nicely, hangs onto position through this long, long right. Flick left onto the Mistral, foot to the boards, and then accelerate up towards the chicane. There you've got the Oregon twins almost tripping over one another because on the inside line, Filippo Vetto goes ahead of Massimo Siglia, takes the place away. So this is 13th and 14th they're arguing over. So Massimo Siglia started the lap ahead. Filippo Berto now is up and past him. And they turn their way out of Bose. Another good little fight going on here is Manuel Bajarano just up ahead of Milan Petelet. So Petelet number nine, the former French Carrera Cup racer, getting himself onto the tail now of Manuel Bajarano, who's another driver new to these cars this year, raced uh, in karting, went as far as the Euro F3 Open Series, ran out of money, went back to karting, but trying to kickstart the career now by coming into a GT-style championship, coming into Lamborghini Super Trofeo. That's the AM leader, Andrzej Lewandowski, who has, over the last few seasons, been in Pro-Am and therefore Drives with a co-driver, but on his own, he's very much an am and leads the category, but only just right now because Gabriel Rindoni, the Luxembourg driver, is on his tail. And then you've got Stefan Guerin next in the queue. 21 is that Luxembourgish driver, Gabriel Rindoni. He could not be closer to Andrzej Lewandowski as they come now out of turn three. Forces Lewandowski out wide. Rindoni almost committed to the inside there, but couldn't quite level in time. So Rindoni slightly delayed in that. The Leipzig car loses a couple of lengths, gets now onto the... Mistral straight once more. We are currently working lap number five. And the race leaders well clear, but the margin between them is coming down. This is the AM lead battle we're looking at. Eighth and ninth overall, Lewandowski ahead of Rindoni. They turn their way from the chicane back onto the Mistral straight. A little bit of a rattle over the curb there, but now making that run up towards the right at senior goes. Hard charging. Andrzej Lewandowski and charge he needs to. Now, number 32 is being given a penalty, Sandro Murr. So he is going to be given a 10 second time penalty. It'll be added on at the end of the race for that contact with Privitelio. So, 10 second penalty for Sandro Murr's car as there the fight goes on for currently sixth and seventh places. Bergerano keeping Petelet behind him, Lewandowski keeping Rindoni at bay as they head up towards the end of lap number five now. The race leaders are about to break the beam and as they will do so, uh, it is still Max Wearing ahead. He's not really shaking off the challenge of Pierre-Louis Chauvet. Now Chauvet will give way to Johan Boris Shire, who is another very accomplished young driver, uh, but, 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 Max Wearing will give way to Loris Spinelli, who is perhaps the most titled, most decorated driver of Lamborghini terms, at least on this grid. So Loris Spinelli is certainly going to have the advantage. He knows the cars very well. He knows this circuit. He's going to take some stopping. So Max Wearing just has to hand that car over in the lead for the uh, drivers when they get to the pit window. If you are on your own, 
it is 101 seconds. If you have a two driver uh, car, it is 98 seconds, the line to line. But it's an extra three if you are a solo driver, just to try and balance things a touch. 89, Manuel Bejarano keeping for the moment Milan Petelet at bay. Petelet has raced here in his French Carrera Cup day, so he knows what the circuit is like. Bejarano, former Formula 3 racer, onto the Mistral straight now. Speed building, you can see that switchback nature in the background as the cars thread out of the chicane down towards turn three. And this the run towards the chicane on the Mistral straight. So hard on the brakes, slow the cars down, turn left, burst of acceleration, turn right, and then ease the car back onto the Mistral. All these different configurations of the circuit these days, different link roads, different cut-throughs to enable uh, races to be run on different lengths of circuit. Up towards the scene they come. So this battle continues as you look at number nine, Milan Petelet, still giving a hard time to Bergerano. And as they come up towards the end of the lap, bear in mind as well uh, that we are looking at sixth and seventh, but different classes. We're looking at a pro and a pro-am. So we're looking at the different categories of drivers here, but it's a, a battle for position outright. Number 32, Sandro Mer's car with that penalty, I think I'd covered off earlier on as the leaders now power their way past the pits once more and the margin is eight tenths of a second. So wearing to Chauvet, point eight. A drama there because off the road has gone Pierre Feligioni. So another uh, experienced Am in GT terms has got it wrong approaching the exit of turn three up towards Le Col, that section of the circuit. Doesn't look like there's any damage, but equally, it doesn't look like the car wants to start. So it brings out the yellow flag for the moment, and that will drop the car down the order as the leaders currently work lap number seven. Eight tenths of a second was the margin last time between the top two. And here, number 11, which is Filippo Berto, he is getting himself closer and closer all the time now to Raffaele Giannoni. There is Berto, he, for Oregon, he's running in 13th place. And Filippo Berto, who is going to hand the car over to Alessandro Tarabini, who was another graduate of the Italian Clio Cup scene. He made his Lamborghini debut at the World Final last year, but these two getting more and more experienced with the car, getting more and more familiar. They run in the pro class, so they're up against more experienced Lamborghini drivers, but getting on with the job very nicely. And in fact, now Filippo Berto trying to close back up onto the tail of Giannoni and also fend off Massimo Siglia. Now, Siglia is a more experienced driver in Lamborghini Super Trofeo terms, but he's being shown the way by his less experienced teammate for the moment. We've got five minutes before the pit window opens. So five minutes time before the pit window is opened, then the pit stops will cycle through. And then you've got that 20 minute dash to the end. Berto there, and also Siglia clip those little markers. Now, as long as they're on the left-hand side of the car, that's fine. If you're the wrong side of them, then you get yourself in trouble. In the background is Feligioni. Now, I was wrong in saying it was down at Lecol. It's, uh, by the look of it, coming up through uh, the exit of uh, Bose towards Bendor that he's lost the car. But either way, he's not yet got going. So that car's still stationary. It's a long way off the racetrack, so if it does need to be retrieved it could be covered under a yellow flag hopefully that but for the moment the race continues without interruptions there number 51 Oscar Lee comes up towards the timing line uh, Oscar who gets quicker and quicker and quicker in these cars all the time second in pro-am and actually now that Milan Petelet has dropped back a little bit uh, off the road also there goes 44 which is Damien Chosek now in fact Oscar Lee has got himself into the lead of pro-am now what has happened to number nine, Milan Petelet, because Petelet has not come through. We have got a yellow flag in sector three, but I think that was partly for Damien Chosek there. But somewhere we've got number nine stranded. Uh, has he been across the timing line? No, not yet. So number nine, who was leading in Pro-Am, off the racetrack somewhere, looking into the distance, there is a car off approaching the last corner. So that's another one. That isn't Milan Petelet, but there are two off there. One of those is out of the... Uh, Michinek Motorsport ACCR stable and the other one that's 22 that's the Michinek car that's Libor Dvoracek the other I'll get to in a second because it's 
possibly Francois Grimm. Petelet has got going again, uh, but a long, long way down the order, but he has rejoined. Right, now Libor Dvorak gets going. Right, that's the Petelet answer. So that's a spin, self-induced for Milan Petelet. And then there's contact there as 31, which is Francois Grimm, just tags the back of Libor Dvorak, and around they both go. So that was a grim experience for Libor Dvorak, just tagged by Francois Grimm, and around they went. But without damage, both able to rejoin. We go pretty much now back to green. But this is for the race lead. And Max Wearing, look, he's being given a very hard time by Pierre-Louis Chauvet. So Max Wearing uh, did the job in qualifying, got pole. He's led all the way thus far. If he can hang on in there to the pit stop window, that's sort of job done because Loris Spinelli can then do the hard work in the second stint. But Wearing is not having an easy time of this right now. They blast over the timing line. In third place in the white car there, the VS Racing, the Vincenzo Sospiri Racing car is Stefan Tribodini. And then Marzio Moretti is next in the queue. Uh, Amory Bonduel runs fifth. Manuel Bergerano is in sixth place. I was mentioning Filippo Berto and also Alessandro Tarabini earlier on. They are both part of that Lamborghini Young Driver programme. Pierre-Louis Chauvet then running in that second spot. Four tenths of a second back from Max Wearing last time. That gap is coming down between the two of them all the time, no question. Up onto the Mistral straight, they last once again. The margin between the top two, you can see how it has been fluctuating, but Chauvet is a man on a mission then. He brought the gap down last time, and he's still pushing, pushing, pushing. But Max Wearing, I would anticipate, will be in relatively early. Now, he's got this lap and one more before he will be able to make a pit stop. But certainly Pierre-Louis Chauvet wants to be ahead at the window. He made a bit of a mistake in the chicane there, and he's lost two or three lengths because they come back onto the Mistral. In the background, Stefan Tribodini, who was lapping quicker than both last time. And then in fourth place, Marzio Moretti, quicker than anybody ahead of him. So actually, quite nicely, the leading quartet, late stint, all concertina -ing here, as you look at Tribodini, Greek GT4 graduate, coming into the championship this season. French GT champion, GT4 uh, European Series uh, Southern Cup champion, Stefan Tribodini and now switching to Lamborghini Super Trofeo for this season. And going very nicely as well as the cars blast their way once more up towards the Courbe du Village, to the Virage de la Tour, and out of that left, the very sharp, very tight, very slow Virage du Pont at the end of the lap. Back onto the power now. So it's almost three for the lead. We are almost in the window. The window will open on this lap for the leaders. Through they go. breaks into turn one. We see Marzio Moretti go through, Amory Bonduel. Uh, this is the battle for honours in Am. It is still Andrzej Lewandowski ahead of Gabriel Rindoni. Stefan Guerin is third, and the margin between them is 0.688 of a second as they go across the line. But right now, looking strong is Lewandowski, because again, Rindoni has tried pretty much everything, but Lewandowski, who has been racing these cars for year after year after year, knows exactly how to control the situation, and right now he's hanging on to the place. Oscar Lee, currently heading Pro-Am. Comes down now into the turn two, turn three sequence out of that chicane. Loops him round, and then up towards Le Col comes number 51. So Oscar Lee, who gets better and better every time out in these cars, storms his way up onto the Mistral once more. 30 minutes of the race to go, which now means the pit window is open. And here, Oscar Lee clearing class over Massimo Siglia, and then Bronek Formanek in third place in the unaffected uh, Michinek Motorsport entry. So now let's see if anyone is going to bail early, whether there's going to be much in the way of shuffling out of that order. As yet, there isn't. There's 26, which is the Semolins, Francois and Benoit Semolin, in the Lamborghini Cup, and currently the class leaders there as well. And number nine, Max uh, uh, Milan Petelet, has just gone through, in fact, up into 24th spot. So uh, Petelet recovering, gaining ground all the while. Right, we do have people in the pit lane. One is Sandro Mur, who's got that time penalty at the end of the race. Uh, we've also got the Privitellios in. It does confuse life a little bit here because, of course, some pit 
on one side of the timing line and others pit on the other side of the timing line. That is the leader coming in. So that is Max Waring, who gives Loris Spinelli the absolute maximum opportunity here to go for the race win. Stops on his marks and another spin for uh, number 22 then, Libor de Voracek. That is, again, coming onto the pit straight. And that means that cars are going to have to scatter left or right to try to avoid. Pit window is open. There's a car stranded on the track. So far, so good. Everybody misses him. Uh, just looking out of the window into the distance, the car is absolutely bang slap in the middle of the road. And most go round the outside. Not all, but most do. So far, so good. But that car has now fired up and got out of the way and it was all self-induced just a little bit too early with the power out of that very very slow corner in first gear right lots of people may have predicted a safety car coming out because they've all bailed for the pit lane and this makes life very very crowded down there but Pierre-Louis Chauvet then leads the way from Stefan Tribodini in second place and then in third it is Marzio Moretti Max Wearing is the only driver out of that leading line to have stopped Loris Spinelli now takes over that car and he will rejoin as soon as those 98 seconds are completed. So that's the leader for the moment on the pit stops, this Arcadia racing entry of Pierre-Louis Chauvet. 1.3 seconds to the good over Stefan Tribodini, and then it is Marzio Moretti running currently in that third place. And Mori Bonduel fourth, fifth is Loris Spinelli, sixth, Manuel Bajorano. Andres Lewandowski comes next in the queue, and this is the view from Chauvet's car. Clear road ahead of him now, so what this kind of means for him is that he's got to think about a qualifying effort. Treat every corner as though you're on a qualifying lap, because the pace here, with a clear road ahead of him, is effectively gaining ground back over, or back up to at least, the 61 entry that led early on. They're going to need every tenth that they can find, these two, to combat the drive of Loris Spinelli. Pierre-Louis Chauvet goes through. Spinelli is on track now, so the car that led early on has rejoined the race. And the pit lane still busy as others cycle through the stops. See how much of the curve they use coming out of Senior. Down towards Bose there, challenge made on the inside line. No way through, I don't think, there, however. Number five, just up ahead, that's the car being driven by Rafael Mikrut. And Milan Petelet is the man giving him a hard time trying to find a place. Petelet, after his earlier spin, fighting back. But that now is Loris Spinelli. So at the end of the lap, we'll see where that pit stop has dropped him to. Loris Spinelli then for Max Wearing, who did the first stint for Benaldi Motorsport that operates that car and on target, seemingly, for yet another race win, because, like I say, given his experience, given his speed, he does take an awful lot of stopping. Spinelli, uh, European champion, world final winner. He has won the Pro-Am championship. He's won uh, the Pro, so there's not much he's not won in Lamborghini racing, and he drops down towards the end of his outlap, heads up towards the timing line now, sprints towards the end of, for him, lap number 11, goes through, and Loris Spinelli breaks the beam now in 17th place, but he'll buy back most of, if not all of, those places as others cycle through and make their mandatory pit stops. Of course, others now trying to get themselves up through the traffic. Number seven you saw going through there, Pierre-Louis Chauvet, in a battle with Richard Rego de Seves. Doesn't want to be battling with a back marker, wants that car to get out of his way and give him an untroubled ride. Now that happens. So clear of the traffic this time is Chauvet. And there is De Seves getting in the way a little bit of, is that Berto, number 11? In the background, one bails for the pit lane. Look, the Oregon car goes through. And in fact, it was number 27, Massimo Siglia's car that he shares with Lewis Williamson. Now, did that one pit? It did. So that's Lewis Williamson who's taking it over. Pierre-Louis Chauvet goes through. The one that died for the pit lane was Stefan Tribode in the out of second place. So Chauvet now going as late as he can in the window before he gives that car over. Uh, to co-driver Johan Boris Shire. Out of number six, hops Stefan Tribodini. In will get Jean-Luc Daria, another driver that switched from GT4 into Super Trofeo for this year. We saw him in a Mercedes in GT4 last year, you might recall. But now Jean-Luc Daria takes over from Stefan Tribodini. They will do it the other way around tomorrow in race two. As here up towards Senior goes number 61 then. So Loris Spinelli chipping his way up the order. We'll see at the end of this what 
his first flying lap is going to be. Max Weering has done the fastest lap of the race, 2 minutes 4.626. And here, right on the tail of Gerard van der Horst, is Spinelli. They've actually shared a car in the past at the World Finals, but uh, Spinelli goes ahead of the Lamborghini Cup entry. It starts to pull clear as the cars then rattle their way over the kerb, in the case of Spinelli, up towards the completion of lap number 13. Away now goes Jean-Luc Dauria, back into the race. That car will go, the VS Racing entry. So 61, Loris Spinelli up towards the line. In the background, Gerard van der Horst makes his pit stop. Donovan Privatelio goes through, having taken over from his father, Luciano, in the FFF Racing Team entry. <laughs> Andrea Caldarelli's team, which, of course, is a good Lamborghini factory squad, has been committed to Super Trofeo for the last two or three seasons. And more and more cars in the stable this year. Spinelli goes through. And as you might anticipate, Loris Spinelli rejoins ahead of number six, by some margin as well, ahead of Jean-Luc Daria. And Daria's pit stop time was a very slow one by the look of it. So it was one minute and 39. Lost time in the pit, seemingly there, against others. But it's that car back on track. In now comes Pierre-Louis Chauvet. So the race leader is in through that little chicane that brings you into the main pit lane. All of this done at the pit lane speed limit then of 50 kilometers an hour, so it feels oh so slow. Then there's that long drive down the pit road. So for the moment, number 54 is the leading car in the race then. That is Marzio Moretti, who took over from Milan Tikens. That leads. There you've got arriving ready for the pit box. Pierre-Louis Chauvet. Johan Boris Shire is ready to take over. French Clio champion, former Renault racer. And Johan Boris Shire, the more experienced of the two, ready to jump on board. So a good first stint by Pierre-Louis Chauvet. Whether it's good enough to keep that car in the mix for a win, time will tell. 54, Marzio Moretti then leads on the road, but he's going to have to come in this time, otherwise he'll run out of time and get a penalty. So Marzio Moretti on lap 14 leads the way, just under 22 minutes to go as he accelerates up again towards the chicane on the Mistral straight. Sets the car up for the left and the right and the left they'll flick through and then accelerate once more up towards senior so that's loris spinelli who is pushing 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 and on this lap has done an absolute best in the middle sector perhaps to nobody's great surprise given how good he is in these cars so spinelli could be on target for the fastest lap of the race this time around he's about to get the lead back seemingly from that car and he does so so spinelli there on the track overtakes number seven, which is finishing its pit stop of Johan Boris Shire. And what was tenths of a second before the pit stop is much, much greater now. And if anything, number six comes back into the mix there. Look, because all of a sudden, Jean-Luc Daria looks to be giving Johan Boris Shire a tough time. Everybody else, I think, has now cycled through the pit stop other than uh, Moretti. We haven't yet had a pit stop time for number seven, but hopefully that will be revealed which will therefore be a good comparison against the car of Loris Spinelli. Spinelli was pretty much bang on the 98 seconds to the 10th it was 98 seconds uh, so absolutely perfect stuff that time from Bonaldi. There is the car from VS Racing of Jean-Luc Daria pressing on onto the Mistral. Into the pits by the way has now come uh, the car of the on the road leader Marzio Moretti so Moretti will again fall down the order here. More stops cycle through as the door opens. That's Moretti to give way to Milan Tikens. Out jumps Marzio Moretti. Other cars having finished the stops, ready to leave. Uh, Marzio Moretti, former Italian F4 uh, racer and Le Mans Cup racer, is ready to go. And there, on his outlap, Johan Boris Shire has got a problem. So this is the car that was running second, briefly led during the pit stop window but there's something not right. So on the outlap, something has hit. Uh, Johan Boris Shire could be stuck in gear, but he's crawling up towards Senior here. And it's not right. It's been six all the way through the corner. You can see how much pace he's losing. But Johan Boris Shire crawls on all the way round Bose. It's not gears, because that's dropped to fourth, but there's some loss of power, that's for sure. It sounds horrible, it sounds slow, 
And so that car is coming back into the pit lane and after a really good first stint by Pierre-Louis Chauvet, something on this outlap for Johan Boris Shire has broken and that car is effectively now out of the race and that gives Loris Spinelli an absolutely free ride to the chequered flag, doesn't it, with just under 19 minutes to go now. It's also got a little bit more overcast all of a sudden here. The bright sunshine of earlier on has, for the moment at least, gone, so temperatures cool slightly. They're going through is Amory Bonduel. Now, that car is fourth at the moment. Well, that might change when we get the updated order with 54 mil Antiquans after the pit stop. We've got drive-throughs coming for number 32, which is Sandro Moore and Martin Kodrich. Also, a drive-through is being given to number 97, Jürgen Krebs, Tim Muller, for speeding in the pit lane. Martin Kodrich, real shame that that car gets penalised. Kodrich, who was a former uh, Blancpain GT Series Asia champion, race winner in British GT, another very quick, if underrated driver is Martin Kodrich. Good to have him on the grid, but whether it was him on the way out or Sandro Moore on the way in, we don't get the information, but either way, speeding is the result and a penalty comes. Bit of a wobble for Lewis Williamson there. Sorry, from uh, Tarabini there, number 11, the other Oregon car. Uh, Alessandro Tarabini got it wrong. Coming out of turn two and gets an assist there that turns him around. So that was a rather rude tap in the tail from number 10, the Rexel car of Rodrigo Testa. And around he has gone. And the Oregon car tries to sort itself out, but I'm afraid to say that's cost the car three places so he was a little bit wide coming out of the S's down towards the chicane bang a tap in the tail from Rodrigo Testa and a round goes there number 11 Alessandro Tarabini so the Clio Capitalia racer revolves and again these cars we've seen it already in this race do take a long time before they will fire up again you've got to go all the way down through that uh, electronic gearbox then you've got to try and get the car to fire up but when they're so hot sometimes they do not want to do that they get there in the end so the uh, call for a, a, a panic safety car isn't required you just give them time and eventually they do fire up and get going but it's not just the time lost in the spin it's the time lost also in the recovery that really does hurt the drivers here so they're going through is 28 that is Amory Bonduel who is now up into third place so the order is Spinelli ahead by crikey 14 and a half seconds from Milan Tikens in second place, and then this car of Amory Bonduel in third. Loris Spinelli has now done the fastest lap of the race. Perhaps no surprise there, because we know he is an absolute gun in one of these cars. And Bonduel's last lap was two minutes five. He's lapping quicker then than Milan Tikens ahead. The other one that's really dropped back on the pit stops, number six. So uh, Tribodini and Daria, even though the pit stop was okay in comparison with other people's, has certainly cost them places. So whether it was a, a, a poor in lap by. Uh, Tribodini or a poor outlap by Daria depends on who you talk to I guess but either way the pace of that car has not really been reflected from where it was early on in the race others recovering number nine we had that spin early on from Milan Petele well now Dimitri Kvatsova at the wheel of the car uh, it's in 20th spot just gained a couple in fact on that last lap through but Loris Spinelli who has just looked so good all career really in these cars and the first season he took part in Super Trofeo Europe with Mikhail Grenier there's been no stopping him and up now he comes through Bose down the pit lane for its drive through comes Martin Kodric so this is the drive through being served the car was way way back anyway but this isn't going to help the mood in the camp that's for sure 28th was Martin Kodric this is the walk of shame past all the other teams who look and stare and say, we know what you were doing. Ah, and he's not going to do the drive through. He's going to stop in the pits. So have they decided to call time on this? They look at the front left, say maybe there's been another incident that's picked up some damage on that car or the damage sustained early on in the Privatelio incident has got worse. Either way, it's in and it ain't for going out again. Now this battle that you're looking at that comes down into turn one, Amory Bonduel, Hustles on in pursuit of Milan Tikens. The margin is nine tenths of a second. It's for second and third places. There is a 10 second time penalty being given to number 10, Rodrigo Testa, for causing a collision. So Testa, we saw him turn around the Tarabini Oregon car. That earns him a 10 second penalty applied 
by the officials. Up the kerb goes number 54, Milan Tikens. Then might be on borrowed time here because Amory Bonduel is looking good as this stint wears on. Bonduel inching up onto the back. He's still got 14 minutes in which to do this. Six times a karting champion. Got as far as GP3 Formula Renault Euro Cup level did Amory Bonduel in single seaters. But another driver making that switch of disciplines to GT cars now. He's another of the Lamborghini young drivers, so his ability identified by Giorgio Sana and the rest of the motorsport team. And uh, Bon Duel aiming to repay that faith with, possibly here, a class win. He was fifth in the standings coming into this race in the pro category after his first two races in these cars at Imola, getting his head around it all the time. Wide there, running up towards the bollards, which have now long since been flattened, goes Milan Tikens. And Bonduel inching up onto the back of him. But Loris Spinelli is almost in tomorrow's race. So far ahead is he now. The margin is 15.6 seconds. And there is just no stopping Spinelli. He and Max Wearing make a really, really good partnership. And there just isn't anybody at the moment with the speed, with the experience to, to go with them, it seems. John Luke Daria. Still hustling on in fourth place. Now, Daria's last lap was a really slow one, a 2 minutes 14, suggesting he'd had a moment. We've also looked at a change for the leader van because Gabriel Rindoni now in the Leipzig car is up ahead of Andrzej Lewandowski. So they were nose to tail earlier on. They're not that far apart now, but it is in the different order. So Lewandowski is behind, and there he is. The other green car, largely green car, further up the road is Rindoni. And there, look, Dan Wells has got between them, number 51. Another spin, 77 has got it wrong, you can see. That is uh, Alfredo Hernandez Ortega. He rejoins, Flame having spat from the back of the car. He gets back onto the racetrack once more. Right, that's Manuel Bajorano's car. That is now in fifth place. And the fact that you've got the leading am in sixth, Gabriel Rindoni, is mighty impressive here. 24, you can see, into the chicane, being given a hard time. Oliver Freimut on his tail is Tim Muller. This little battle is for 26th and 27th overall. These are also AMs, but a long way back from the class opposition of Rindoni, Lewandowski, and then the third of the AMs, currently number 13, the car of Stefan Guerin and Shahan Sakisam, the Lebanese driver. Place gained there because diving up on the inside is Raffaele Giannoni, puts himself up past. Number 12, so gets himself clear of the Daniel Vashinsky driven car that was started by Regis de Sebo. And again, Raffaele Giannone, experienced driver, using all of that to good effect now to try to catch the class opposition. Now that is the second place car, Milan Tikens being held up a bit in traffic, Amory Bonduel arriving on his tail now. So those two go through pretty much together as they make that run up towards the Virage de la Tour. Nose to tail, but the way that Bonduel is going now suggests that he's going to be able to make a move before much longer. Into the Virage du Pont they come. Different approach there you can see from Bonduel. Looks to try to get a quicker run, rattles the left-hand wheels over those kerbs. Storms past the pits once more. And 10 minutes on the clock then as they head into the first sequence of corners. So you've got that. Uh, S's de la Verrière, first of all, through the right, through that second element they come now. And the margin at the start of this lap was just three tenths of a second. Into the chicane they come, down towards saint -Bohme. There, hard on the brakes comes Milan Tikens. So he's having to work hard to keep the second place. Now, Dan Wells, leading in the Pro-Am category, is doing an outstanding job because he's now got himself up past Manuel Bejarano. Granted, Dan is the pro in a Pro-Am car, but he's doing a great job fourth overall and a win for him and Oscar Lee Beckons right now as the cars storm their way once again up the Mistral straight. I'm not suggesting necessarily that Dan Wells is going to be able to get onto terms with these two, but it won't be for the want of trying. He's a long way back, but you never know what might befall one of these as they try and thread their way past Gerard van der Horst in the Lamborghini Cup entry number 98. He skips out of the way. The rest come steaming past now. So there he's born duel onto the Mistral straight once again, hunting down Tekens further up the road. Number eight, the recovering Privitelio entry. It's Donovan at the wheel of it. It's 24 there, goes through. 
That's the car of Oliver Freimut, which is a lap down. Freimut, another experienced one-mate racer, runs in the AMS. We saw his son in the championship last year, but he's now gone off to race in uh, Porsches. But uh, Oliver Freimut staying loyal to the Lamborghini brand. There, 28, Amory Bonduel comes then towards the Courbe du Village, that elongated right-hander, and then you go left at the Virage de la Tour that brings you hard onto the brakes into Virage du Pont, the last corner on the lap. They've also got back markers to worry about. Donovan Privitelio tries to get the FFF racing team car out of the way, which he will do. That allows Tekens to go through, it allows Bonduel to go through. So this nose-to-tail battle then for second place heads over the timing line once more. And this time Bonduel comes up and has a look on the inside line. Couldn't do it then, slots back in behind. Speed building as they get back onto the power, down towards the chicane here. Which is effectively one corner on the track map. Turn two, the chicane. Turn three is the uh, S's de la Saint-Baume. And then this brings you around to Le Col. So we're on lap number 20. We have got just under eight minutes of the race to go. And Loris Spinelli is well clear up front. 12.7 seconds to the good now. The lap times are going up a little bit from Spinelli. And therefore the gap is coming down a little bit. Uh, but he's so far up the road, it is hardly a concern for him at all. Spinelli, Tekens, Bonduel, ahead of Oscar Lee and Dan Wells, Pro-Am leading car in fourth place. Uh, Dan Wells is closing on those ahead of him a little, but again, it's so much of a gap, and also it's the class result that they're after, that I suspect he'll be very, very happy for fourth overall after a really impressive drive, and it's fascinating to see uh, the way that uh, Oscar Lee gets faster and faster all the time as well. Way out wide there in the traffic goes Bonduel out of scene. Over the kerb goes wide, trying to clear the Oregon car, which put him off his line a little bit then as they tried to come up and get past Tarabini. In the end, no harm done, but it did cost Bonduel time, even if there was no damage and no contact, thankfully. It's going to put Oscar Lee and Dan Wells, by the way, into the lead of the Pro-Am Championship, this, because the opposition is the Massimo Siglia Lewis Williamson car that is second in class, so they're going to switch places. There is... Uh, Dan Wells, number 51, Oscar Lee started, Dan Wells behind the wheel of it now. The transponder's not been switched for some reason, that's why it's showing the original driver's name, but the pair of them have done a really, really good job here, and uh, Dan Wells, we know he's good from when he was winning single-seater championships in China. He uh, made the decision relatively early in his career to go out to Asia to race over there, earn a living, and has based himself in Hong Kong, been very successful both in real world as well as sim racing out there and it's good to have him back in Europe and reminding people of his ability. But Oscar Lee has just, largely with Dan's tutelage, got better and better and better season after season after season. There, heading up towards the end of a lap, Andrzej Lewandowski, who is definitely coming back at Gabriel Rindoni now. They've both cleared Manuel Bejarano. So Bejarano, who is in the pro class, fading late race. You've got pro, 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 am, 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 pro. The leading Lamborghini Cup car is 25th, the Semolins. But Gabriel Rindoni could be on borrowed time here as well because Andrzej Lewandowski half a second back as they went across the line that time. Andrzej Lewandowski in the GT3 Poland entry, the quicker of the GT3 Poland cars goes through. Raffaele Giannoni, by the way, is being warned about track limits. And another spin, 77 is off the road again. Alfredo Hernandez Ortega, the Mexican has lost it again towards the end of the lap. That, I think, is approaching the Bendor corner. Gets going again, blasts back onto the circuit. Of course, all those red and blue swirls designed with the type of paint to act to retard the pace of the car and just dodging around. Lucky not to get collected out of all of that. In fact, Dimitri Kravatsova in the recovering number nine entry after that earlier spin from uh, Milan Petelet. Bit of a rattle over the curb there from Andrzej Lewandowski that just slightly delays the approach onto the Mistral straight. But Loris Spinelli still clear by 11 seconds. Yes, the gap's coming down a little bit, but he's driving well within himself here. And Milan Tikens getting away by a second from Amory Bonduel because of that uh, slow Oregon car just being in the way last time. Gabriel Rindoni ahead of Lewandowski, as you can see, in Am. The third Am is Shahan Sarkisian. 
but it's not for catching, I don't think. It's going to be an arm battle between these two very green cars. The Levin pole entry of Andrzej Lewandowski turns, then now up out of the Virage S de Bendor. There's more traffic up the road as well that they're going to have to factor in behind them. Lewis Williamson is now running in seventh place. Eighth is Shahin Sarkisikian. Uh, ninth is Manuel Bajorano. Tenth now the recovering, or theoretically recovering, Jean-Luc Daria. But that car is still doing very, very slow laps. Remember, it lost time in the pits. A bit like we saw out of the Chauvet and Shire car. It's never really got pace in the second stint. So something is not right uh, for Jean-Luc Daria and Stefan Tribodini. Way out wide of the background there once more goes Amory Bonduel. He's still pushing on to get onto terms with Milan Tikens with three and a half minutes on the clock, but very nearly ran out of road there on the wide outside. Once more they come diving their way through that chicane. Back onto the power goes Amory Bonduel. Now he's certainly close enough to have a go at Tikens. There's a back marker up the road as well, which might just affect life, but Bonduel thinks about the inside line. Tikan sits committed in the draft as they go up now through Senior. And this might just delay Milan Tikan because he's going to be quick out of that corner and then might just need to check up to factor in the slower car ahead. Bonduel right back at the races now. He's got a tighter line as well. He's up the inside line. He gets sideways. There's contact and around goes Tikan. Big, big lose for him. And there, slowing right down, Amory Bonduel, because he knows that that was effectively his fault and a penalty is probably going to head his way. He committed to the inside, he got sideways, and as he tried to correct the car, bounced into the side of Milan Tikans that turned him around. And here it is in replay. It was a bold effort, look, he got a tighter line, used the kerb, goes for it, and now the car snaps away and mid-slide, as it were, connects to Milan Tikans, turns him around, and there is no doubt that whether it was deliberate or not, Amory Bonduel caused a collision. The trouble is that the places I suspect are going to be reversed, and therefore it will put him back behind Milan Tikens. But Tikens was the innocent part in all of that. He was ahead, suddenly got a whack in the side from a slightly out of control Amory Bonduel. And it's a real, real shame because that had been building up to be a good battle. There is, over the timing line, Amory Bonduel. And Milan Tikens is right back with him. I wonder whether Bonduel is slowing to try and give back the place because he seems to have lost a big chunk of time, bearing in mind how far off the racetrack Milan Tikens was. Either way, he is ahead for the moment, but Tikens, certainly with the uh, red mist coming down now, is all fired up to try to retake the position once more. That is the recovering number eight of Donovan Privitelio. Now, fair play to the father and son Privitellios after Luciano was tagged into that spin. They've got the car back up into 26th place. And are currently ahead, are they, in the Lamborghini Cup? Yes, they are. So they've managed to uh, overhaul the Semolans now. So the Privitellios, they can see the blue and white FFF racing team car class leader as it comes through the chicane out wide there as Milan Tikens and Amri Bonduel battle again Bonduel is the one that comes off worse forced out wide over the curbing gets back onto the circuit and accelerates up towards senior once more so they turn out of that right hander but again every time Bonduel gets close something goes wrong but what has happened in all of this is that Tikens has gone through now, a 10-second time penalty is being added to Bonduel at the end of the race for causing that collision. Well, he's lost the place anyway by his mistake at the chicane. Uh, here is the leader who is just about going to miss the chequered flag, I think, by probably about 10 seconds. He could slow it right down here and save himself another lap. Loris Spinelli comes up towards the line. Seven seconds on the clock, six, five. It's going to be touch and go, this, but he's about to break the beam, I think. Is there a flag ready for him? He goes through. He has slowed right down and goes by. The clock has hit zero, but there wasn't a flag there. So Loris Spinelli goes through once more. If he did miss the time, it was by about a second. It was as close as it could have been that. So Loris Spinelli, had he gone a couple of seconds slower, would have uh, taken the flag. And this is confirmed as being the last lap. So he just, just crossed the beam, the wrong side of the R being up. Otherwise, the result would have been confirmed for a win. So he's got one more lap to go then as he comes now down towards the exit of that chicane once more, down towards the S's of saint Bohm, and then on towards Lecole. So it's going to be three out of three, what's becoming a rather dominant season for Loris Spinelli and Max Wearing. 
got to say, he looks as though this is a very, very sedate last lap, almost like he's low on fuel because there, coming on to the Mistral, you saw the car jinking left and right. I think he is running low on fuel, isn't he? Because all of a sudden, Loris Spinelli's lap times are going up. He is two seconds slower in the first sector alone. Gives it a bit more of a spurt into the chicane. He's still got 13 seconds in hand, but this might be an interesting last half of the last lap, if indeed the car is a little bit marginal on fuel. So again, Loris Spinelli gently makes the run up towards senior this is about the only elevation there is the slight rise towards the right hander here it looks quick enough maybe the idea now is to really push into this part of the circuit and then almost coast it home from here so spinelli turns his way through bose but he doesn't come catapulting out of the corner does it that looks very sedate almost like he's seen a waved yellow flag but i think it's purely that he's being respectful of the fuel in the car. He lost three seconds in the middle sector alone. So he's lost five seconds on this lap. Uh, Milan Tikens is not that far behind. He's not going to get there in time, I don't think. It's only a couple of corners to go, but here Loris Spinelli comes down towards the Virage du Pont. He's going to be safe, but that last lap may have been one too far for him. That's why the car was coasting a little bit earlier to try and manage the fuel. He's just about rung enough out of it as he now jinks left and right, partly in celebration as much as to slosh any fuel around the tank. But it is a win for Loris Spinelli and Max Wearing. What you now have to hope for is that there's enough fuel in the car for a fuel sample to be taken if required post-race. We've had people win in the past and being marginal on fuel, and then they can't provide enough fuel to be uh, checked if that is a requirement of the regulations. But on the road, Loris Spinelli and Max Wearing win. Milan Tikens and uh, Marzio Moretti finishing in second place. And then uh, Amory Bonduel finishing in third. And their last lap was a slow one as well, as also was Bonduel's. So I think they might have been marginal on fuel. Looking at the... Now, that last lap is a very odd one because the sector times have all become much, much slower, which weren't being reflected at the time. I promise you the gap had come down, but the sectors, if you look at individual drivers, are much, much slower. So slightly puzzled as to what the timing screen has shown on that last lap. But either way, there's confirmation of the dramas for Maurice Spinelli, who has parked it as soon as he can, uh, having taken the chequered flag. So out of the car gets Loris Spinelli. Uh, Milan Tikens and Marzio Moretti confirmed in second place. And then third to Amory Bonduel. So Loris Spinelli parks it as soon as he can. He's OK. The car's undamaged, but it just hasn't got enough fuel to do another lap. So the marshal says, put your helmet on and come with me. We'll get you back to the podium. Loris Spinelli confirmed with Max Wearing as the race one winner and of course with that being the winning car we shouldn't really be touched by anybody as it's required for uh, the post-race scrutineering so there Loris Spinelli ushered away and uh, makes his way ultimately to the podium but he took the fastest lap of the race and uh, a fine drive it was too so let's have a look at the results then of the first race of the weekend. Uh, factoring in a penalty or two, it is a win for Loris Spinelli and Max Wearing from Milan Tikens and Marzio Moretti. And the third overall third in pro as well, Amory Bonduel. The winning Am finishing fourth, Andre Lovendowski in the end, getting ahead of Dan Wells and Oscar Lee, that won in Pro Am. Sixth, the second of the Ams, Gabriel Rindoni. Seventh, the second Pro Am, Lewis Williamson, Massimo Siglia. Eighth, the third Am car which was that of Stefan Geram and uh, Shahan Sarkisian. Ninth was Gerhard Batzinger and Brendan Leach. And tenth, a car that never really caught alive, Emmanuel Colombini and Emanuele uh, Zonzini running at the top ten. Uh, the third of the Pro-Ams was the Brendan Leach and Gerhard Batzinger car. Lamborghini Cup won by the Privitellios from the Semolins from Gerard van der Horst, uh, with the Privitellios coming home in 20th spot. So quite a lot for some of the teams to dissect there with incidents and with uh, perhaps the wrong computation on the fuel figures. But like I say, if uh, Loris Spinelli had backed right off at the very end, only for a couple of seconds, he missed taking the chequered flag and therefore had to do that extra lap. And that was very nearly his undoing. But 
what is confusing at the moment is what the timing screen has shown us on that last lap because at the time of the last lap the sectors between the leader and everybody else uh, much much greater margin with Spinelli being caught and yet at the end of the lap the data shows something different uh, we will have the podium eventually but it'll be a few minutes yet before the uh, drivers get there and in the meantime, let's have a look at the highlights of that opening race of the weekend, which began with Max Wearing taking on Pierre-Louis Chauvet on the run down towards the first corner. Everybody managed to get through without too much strife, but there was drama on the first lap. First up, Oscar Lee rode the kerb, and worse was to come as Sandro Mur got into the back of Luciano Privitello down at the uh, Sambon S's. Good little battle out on track also between the Raf Mikrut and also Pierre Felligioni cars. Gerhard Batzinger in a big, big hurry in number 70, the show with Brendan Leach, and a spin, all self-induced for Milan Petele, who went around, and then we had this synchronized spin from Libor Dvoracek as he was tagged in turn by Francois Grimm. Max Wearing was being given a hard time towards the end of his stint by Pierre-Louis Chauvet. And other battles raged on lower down the order as well as you had Alfredo Ortega being uh, chased hard as well. When the pit window opened, most people seemed to come in early to get the stop out of the way. There were plenty of battles that still raged on up and down the order as well as the field cycled through the stops. The order shuffled accordingly as some pit stops were better than others. It's an unusual race in as much as I don't think anybody got a penalty for being wrong on the pit stops. It was all driving standards and the like that was uh, to blame for any penalties like this where Filippo Berto was tagged around by Rodrigo Testa. Testa got a 10 second penalty for his pains and he wasn't the only one because Amory Bonduel got 10 seconds for this even though in the end he fell back behind the man that he tagged into the spin Bel Antiquans uh, he got the penalty and it was a win as he coasted to the line for Loris Spinelli with Max Wearing and a victory coming by 13 seconds the result I think has been taken back a lap I think having said that they were marginal on the time it looks like that result's been given at 23 laps not the last one that they did so I think that's why the uh, gaps on the timing screen are slightly confusing. But uh, delight for class winners, especially for Dan Wells and Oscar Lee in Pro-Am. So yes, even though we had that final lap graphic, I think the timing system has decided that Loris Spinelli did cross the line uh, at 50 minutes and two tenths of a second. So therefore, that last lap where he was marginal on fuel and I was getting excited about the gaps coming down, uh, I don't think it's counted. And so the result was at the end of the previous lap because that's when the 50 minutes were absolutely completed. Uh, and that's why the sector gaps and the overall gap at the end is slightly distorted. What we thought we were seeing was a lap that wasn't really being counted because we had hit 50 minutes, even though the checkered flag didn't come out because it was so, so tight to the time. So Loris Spinelli and Max Wearing are the victors. And uh, we can hopefully hear from our victors across the classes. We'll start in Pro-Am, where there's a delighted combination of Oscar Lee and Dan Wells there with Gemma. Oscar, Dan, congratulations. A fantastic result. We'll come to you first, Oscar. Thank you so much. It's so nice to win here at Paul Ricard. Dan drove an excellent race and uh, I'd like to thank FFF and all our sponsors, Precision uh, Sim and everyone uh, for being involved. Dan, hot. <laughs> yes, the, we were running a little bit hot. The, everything was under control until six laps remaining and we were too high on engine temperature. So every single corner exit, I couldn't get any power. So I had to bring it across the line. I was speaking with my engineer, Luca, asking what delta, what lap time do I need? And uh, I think we just did it by uh, a couple of seconds. So really tough, but great to get our first win this year and kick off the championship in style. Absolutely. Well done and well deserved. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that puts them, as I was saying, into the lead of Pro-Am in the championship. So a great result for Dan Wells and uh, Oscar Lee. And uh, we'll see whether they can do the double tomorrow. There is their car, the uh, FFF Racing Team entry. So uh, the uh, FFF squad having made its name initially really in GT3 by winning in Europe in the sprint and the endurance championships and then doing the same uh, success in uh, America as well uh, and in Asia. Uh, now coming with uh, a big commitment into Super Trofeo. And you can see in the background Nastasio Luciano Privitelio and his son Donovan with him. So uh, they have uh, made it a double for FFF in the, the uh, first race by winning two of the four classes. 
So tomorrow's race will be from a, a separate grid, not based on uh, qualifying, uh, sorry, not based on race results, but based on qualifying times, I should say. And it's going to be interesting to see how different a race result we get tomorrow. Uh, Andrzej Lewandowski is a very happy winning AM driver, and it's not the first time he's been victorious in the AM class, is it, Jan? A few words, I think so, yeah. A class win, but a tiring race. Yes, it's very tiring because I drive alone and I try to, to do as much as possible, and that's why I finished fourth uh, in the general categories. I'm very happy, you know. Congratulations. It was definitely a tough one out there with this te temperature. Thank you very much. Well done. Andrzej Lewandowski then takes the uh, AM victory, and uh, this is how we look in the championship overall. Max Wearing and Loris Spinelli well clear of Jean-Luc Dowry and Stefan Tribodini. Now Dan Wells and Oscar Lee third, but of course they're in the Pro-Am category ahead of Manuel Bergerano. Then it's the uh, Lewis Williamson, Massimo Siglia combination. Milan Petelet and Dimitri Gravatsova come next ahead of uh, Amory Bonduel. Milan Tikens and Marzio Moretti are just ahead of Emmanuel Colombini and uh, Emmanuel Zonzini. So another race tomorrow for Lamborghini Super Trofeo and an opportunity to see whether or not it's going to be four out of four uh, for the combination of Max Wearing and Loris Spinelli. The race tomorrow gets underway at 10 o'clock local time and it of course is the only visit of the season to Paul Ricard. It's uh, one visit to each venue and Loris Spinelli, Max Wearing race winners but with a car that's being retrieved. And so rounding everybody up for the podium has not proved to be the work of a moment. Uh, other good uh, drives in all of that. I mentioned Dan Wells and Oscar Lee, uh, but uh, the fact that you've got Ams fourth and sixth and eighth, very, very impressive indeed. And fair play to Donovan Privitelio because he did the large share of the work to recover that Lamborghini Cup lead that was lost for number eight uh, very, very early on with all the time when the car was tagged into a spin. So to fight back, I know it's a longish race, 50 minutes, and much can happen, but uh, it was a good drive, good recovery that as they fought their way back into contention. So as the uh, cars make their way from the uh, pit lane into the paddock and uh, then to post-race scrutineering. Uh, this is how we look in Pro-Am, and as I was suggesting, it is now Oscar Lee and Dan Wells ahead of Lewis Williamson and Massimo Siglia on points. Milan Petelet and Dimitri Kovatsova uh, third, losing out because of that spin. Colombini and Zonzini are fourth ahead of Brendan Leach and uh, Gerhard Batzinger with Josef Zaruba and Bronek Formanek uh, next in the points. We understand that Loris Spinelli wasn't fuel, but it was an engine problem. It could have been a problem that he didn't have enough fuel maybe in the engine. Uh, but uh, either way, that was why we are told he was uh, struggling towards the end. And fingers crossed, all will be good for tomorrow's race. Join us at 10 o'clock tomorrow uh, for the fourth race of the year in Lamborghini Super Trofeo. Should be another very interesting 50-minute battle here at Paul Ricard. For now, from David Anderson, it's goodbye.